The Romeo Project is an initiative backed by the EU Horizon 2020 program, which aims to reduce offshore O&M costs through the development of advanced monitoring systems and strategies. Its consortium has been made up of 12 recognized and experienced key players from six different EU member states and one associated country led by Iberdrola Renovables Energia. In the project, we have been developing uh, models and tools. Uh, basically, we are aiming to reduce uh, the number of inspections, uh, to reduce the major correctives, to improve the o &M activities that we would have to do, in, uh, of course, in o &M activities, not only for offshore, but also for onshore, that is important for us. With the models, we are trying to have early detection uh, of falls and moving from uh, corrective and calendar-based maintenance to condition-based maintenance. Uh, we have had a very strong support from the different partners and from the different colleagues that are involved in the, the whole supply chain. We have on board some uh, utilities, Iberdola and EDF. We have also some uh, manufacturer components. For instance, we have on board Bachmann and Lau Lagoon. We have IT experts such as Indra, uh, Uptime and IBM. We have also a foundation designer that is uh, Rumble, the University of Strathclyde. And we have also, finally, Tabala that is supporting us in uh, all dissemination and organization activities. I think the results of the project are very, very promising. We have already 22 exploitable results and many others that will be coming. And all the partners uh, will, will be doing the uh, commercialization activities in the coming years. But also, of course, uh, the other companies will, will be using the results internally uh, in order to, to improve uh, the offshore uh, activities. One of the key results of Romeo project is the O&M platform, which is capable of full integration within a central data acquisition and analytics ecosystem for maximum benefit from underlying computing resources. This will improve the decision-making processes for offshore wind farms. A few different things to highlight. First of all, um, the whole digitalization uh, aspect of the project has been very disruptive, I believe, for the industry. And we have managed to train uh, very um, uh, cutting-edge physical and data-driven models. Uh, but at the same time, we've had done great work in integrating these models in, uh, in our platform. So from the wind farm to the actual people working in O&M and making decisions, we have built the whole interface that connects all these pieces together, runs the algorithms, gives the results, and makes this result more interpretable. So that's another, I think, successful uh, aspect of, of the project. And I believe the way we have worked together and the whole synergy between the partners has been really beautiful. I think this uh, innovation is very important for the energy transition and decarbonizing our energy systems, because through these innovations, we are, we are basically reducing uh, the levelized cost of energy for offshore wind. We're improving operation and maintenance decisions. Digital twin technologies let's, at the end enable you to uh, run scenarios, um, evaluate the impact of a specific variables you might think of occurring, um, and also um, digital twins allow you to prepare for um, running monitoring solutions which just need a very small amount of data to, to actually run. So, in this project, for example, we started with strain gauges and SCADA and CMS data. Um, but this data won't be used for the whole lifetime of the, of the um, structure. But basically, you just need a few years to set up the technology. And after setup, you have gained the confidence in understanding your assets performance. And this understanding and insights, um, you can use that digital twin then during the lifetime of the structure um, to understand its performance or during the lifetime of the structure you're in control of the performance of the asset and you will see if your design assumptions uh, were very conservative and this basically helps you to unlock some some potential for so something like power boost strategies or lifetime extension and you can see that if your asset is prepared for this business case or if you have to um, act upon um, and prepare the structure in a way that it can fulfill your business objectives. 
The platform we have uh, developed is very flexible for integration of uh, heterogeneous input data of very different kinds. Uh, we can integrate time series data, um, event data and also uh, unformalized information from uh, maintenance uh, processes. And we are able in the platform to formalize this uh, information and to make it available for further analytics and uh, for calculation of uh, certain KPIs. The innovations developed within the R&D Romeo project work packages have been tested in three multi-scale offshore pilots managed by the wind farm operators of the following projects. Teesside, United Kingdom, Vikinger, Germany, and East Anglia 1, United Kingdom. This way, the benefits achieved have been demonstrated and the future replication of the project in other wind farms is ensured. I think the project uh, from the beginning has been uh, targeting uh, not developing new technology for, uh, let's say, the blades or uh, for the drivetrain or for the design of the foundations, but we are trying to see how the existing state of the art and what we expect to be the state of the art in the upcoming years can be operated in a better way, in a more efficient way, in a more economic way. For example, we have not invested much into innovating sensors, but we are trying to extract more values of the sensors that we are already installing. So I believe that what we have managed to achieve will be applicable to the technologies that will be introduced into the market, into the industry in the next five to 10 years. The future will be bright. I mean, there are uh, great initiatives. We have very ambitious targets, targets that uh, now they seem realistic. We have people who have the drive, but we need to continue to innovate and we need to continue to, um, to develop people and people across different levels from the employment supply chain. So we need people who will be the technical leaders, we need technicians, uh, we need engineers, but we also need to educate the general public on why we are doing what we are doing and why is wind energy so important.